oh, I feel bad about that guy. Guys, you don't like, understand. For me, I forgot about I'm that. I'm a 57 year old man. But I'm married. I have a daughter, and I still like to laugh and hear a good story. And when I want a good story, all I he need to me. do. Is call <laughs> but wait, let me I say have, something I have about friends that. that fulfill different voids in my life. But okay? think about this: when I want to be depressed, I call Lee. When I want to hear about depression, <laughs> I call Lee. Like, what are you doing, Lee? Nothing. Sitting here. I just got back from doing two spots, Lee. Do you know it's 9.45 at night and you're 30 years old? Go out. Mug somebody. Get a hookup. Mug somebody. Do something. So I have true. friends that fulfill different voids. Like, if I want to feel good about myself, I just call Lee. It's true, but when you when call I'm sitting there at five, When I'm sitting there at 10.30 suicidal, ready to decide what I I should, I have, whether I should eat that... <laughs> Whether I should eat that next no. edible. Like, when I'm sitting there, it's 1030, and I'm like, should I eat another fucking... By the way, I get my edibles tonight. Thank God I've been waiting. I'm getting the ATX. 100 milligrams. I'll oh, be ready for New York. Is that as good as... I miss the Those stars of good. death. I need new edibles. Oh, these are better than stars good. of death. Good. I want some. When, 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 I, when I'm feeling that depressed, and I'm like, I should be doing something in my life. I got married. I got a kid. I call Lee. Because I know Lee. Because he's doing so happy. much more? No. <laughs> Lee, but I have fun by myself. Lee, what are you doing? I'm sitting here. I, 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 I but just got back thing. from birds, back rack, and whatever. I go, you he know what? calls me. I don't have a story. And then you're. All, if I don't have a story, he's like, "What happened to my Kate Quigley? Where's yeah, your story?" Like, then, the oh, wait. But then when I do have a story, he's like, "You gotta stop. Fuck. When are you gonna settle down? Quit fucking these fucking." Because she, she fucks the wrong people. I don't always. I'm getting better. Listen. After Listen. the wizard, there's only been two. After the wizard, there was the guy in Vegas. The one guy I dated. After the dated. wizard, did you do a cleanse? Did you go see a Santeria priest or something? <laughs> I actually went to a shaman after the wizard. Okay, Jim yeah. Florentine sent me there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get a, a chicken. And it's a guy that got already it. lying sober. Yeah, we'll, he helped me. We'll clean your pussy. He with did it. We'll it. Cut his head it's off done. We'll I got tested. Look. I was fine because, like I said, nothing is really important, and I've never had a STD. I've only had one yeast infection. It's in my getting. Home. It's not getting annoying or aggravating. It's getting sad. What people will think. It's, it's sad. It's, it's also sad what people think they could accomplish by cutting corners. And you try to help them. The best was the one. You know, I was gone, and I, I wanted to give social media a break. Yeah, I noticed. You could just look at social media so much before you go. You know what? I want to shoot myself in the <laughs> fucking head. It's true. And, and Twitter doesn't bother me. It's Facebook where people are just really stuck. I don't even go through that shit it's, anymore. It's I don't really, even look at it. So I, I come back to 100 messages. You know, yeah. And I'm going through them. Some of them you put a thumb. Some of them you write back. And I got the one from fucking, you know, Milwaukee that they paid. It was a great show. And then pictures of me and them and. And oh then, yeah, and then fucking a whole article on why we didn't party afterward or hang out. That that's what they came to the show. They were for, upset that they paid twenty seven fifty. I go well. I always try to put a dynamite comic in front of me. Yeah, and I try to keep my ticket prices low. I go. You were looking for a friend for twenty seven fifty. You weren't looking to see a show. I go get a dog. <laughs> <laughs> or join a fucking Lonely Hearts Club because I provide a show. It's also I'm weird. I'm not providing a fucking, you're not going back to the hotel room with me. I just did two shows. I really am not in the mood to talk. I just did two it's shows. It's exhausting, but people don't understand, and I get it. That, yeah, you want to say hello and give them a hug yeah. and take a picture, but don't ask me about World War Three and what I think about the Joe Rogan controversy with Mencia of, of 2005. I know. That's the last thing I want to hear on my mind. I know. I don't. I can't even think. I've just been scraping for material. Also, though, for two hours, scraping the bottom of my mind. Yeah. Temples. You're going deep for your material, and now you want to ask me a question about oh, who does not win, Sharon or Ayakunta? <laughs> I have no fucking idea. I'm I not know. even thinking about and that. And they don't realize that they're one person and then there's 300 more I'd coming down you, the I'd line. Ra- I was learned to keep your mouth shut and put your hand out and say hello. That's it. Before you're going to say something wrong, don't say nothing. I know. Because what you're going to say is wrong anyway. Just put your hand out and say, it's a pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you. What's your name? Yeah. I always ask people what their name is. I want to know what their name is. And then they tell you and then you take a picture with them and that's it. I don't have time for a short story. There's 60 people on the line. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's hard. You don't want to do this to them, and you don't want to do this to yourself. Well, the thing is, they would never do that. Could you imagine someone messaging, like, Eddie Van Halen or, like, and going, hey, after the show, why don't we party? Like, they would never do it to, like, a musician or, like, an actor in a Broadway show. I don't know why, because, because we come out and meet people. Which is a generous thing to do, really. Like, no performer. I don't sell merch. You don't sell merch. I don't sell merch. You don't have to come reason. out. Yeah. For that particular reason. I don't I sell either. I want you to say hello and not feel like you have to give me $25 for a fucking t-shirt. Same. I don't, I don't want this. I don't want. And I don't sell I it because I, I don't want to be obligated right. to come out. <laughs> I want to shake your hand. <laughs> yeah. And I want you to tell me you like the podcast is where you came. You, you, you like a subject matter. If I want to sell you something, I'll knock on your door. Yeah. All right. And so your encyclopedia is a stakes door to door or whatever. There's just so many aspects of it that people really don't understand. I'm not there to sell you a t shirt. I'm the just, same way. I'm happy I got you for the twenty seven. That's how I feel. But you're I'm like happy that you got a babysitter. You're not a nickel and dimer. You're not someone that seems ever to me that you're in it for I mean, making money is great, but money, you're not money driven. You know why? Because it's not gonna get you what you want. That's how I end, am. Which is happiness. All we're searching for is to wake up with a smile on your face and not be like the rest of fucking America that's depressed or, or upset about the political climate. Or, you it's know, true. The Koreans are going to strike us. You Just can't. be happy. Well, also how lucky we are. Like I that ate shit for 40 years of my life. I ate shit. My mother died when I was 16. Yeah. And then for I don't know how many years after that, I, I did it on purpose because of my love for comedy. I kept a low nut. I didn't drive a Cadillac. I didn't try to prove to people I was something I wasn't. Right. And then it was such a low nut that I kind of enjoyed it. That's how I am. That's I why I have a Hyundai. <laughs> you know, I come from a society where there's no flash. Yep. There's no flash for various reasons. For the most various is, I don't want to make somebody feel bad. I'm not that person. But I'm almost uncomfortable around. Do I, look like I love Jews too much. <laughs> to get a BMW. Do you understand me? No, you don't. Fuck? Yes, I do. No, I mean, you don't. Yes, I, do. I couldn't see yes, you in a BMW. I, so. I wouldn't get a BMW. Yeah. I don't care how much money they give me. I don't. I belong in a Subaru or a Ford truck. Yeah. That's who I am. Yeah. And that's who I'll always be. Your blue collar dude. Whether a million dollars or not, that ain't going to make you happy. Well, that's how it's I am, so too. It's so funny when you're 21. You think You can't will. wait to have a Testa Rosa and have bitches on your arm and do drugs every night. And let me tell you something. It ain't no fucking bargain. There's a price to pay because once the cocaine and the money are gone, all those things go with it. It's Happiness true. always sticks. All you're thriving That's for it. in this life is to laugh, laugh at yourself. You know, when I fart on a plane, <laughs> I fucking love it. You, you farted in here and you laughed. Oh, yeah. I fought in here and <laughs> I laughed. Me and Lee were traumatized. When you're, when you're fucking, you know what? I've been so broke that I, you know, and I still find a way to laugh. When I used to Me drop, too. When I used to have to drop my daughter off when she was six, you know, Jacqueline, my first daughter, I would cry when I drop her off. So guess what I did? I forced myself to do comedy after I dropped her off as an exercise because I want to be able to do comedy if my fucking mother died that morning. Well, you've done it. I want to. We've be done. Able, it. We've done it. The we've done Brody it. Passed yeah. In Vegas. I want to be able to do comedy if I, I just buried my mother that night. Yep. I still got to be able it's to hard, do comedy. But you have you to. You train yourself. You have to. And there's pain and there's this yeah. and there's that. That's part of that the stand-up. That was hard. That was really fucking That's hard. That's part of the stand-up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You have to train yourself under all these conditions. You know what? There's times if you really dive into stand-up, you're going to have to sleep on some of these cats for six months at one point in your life. Easily. Easily. Yeah. If you really You'll love You'll be homeless. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is homeless. <clears throat> Lee, you're going to be homeless. Get ready. And <laughs> you have to be prepared to go. I remember when Ralphie May was homeless and Joy Medina took him in. Dude, stand up people will. I used to drive to San Diego. I would spend. I didn't even actually. I didn't even have a car at the time. I would take a train to San Diego. It was like thirty dollars each way or something. Stay in a hotel and only get paid twenty dollars for the set. Like I was losing money to do spots yeah, just because you want the spots. That's it. But I feel like it's like building any business. You invest in the business. Well, you have to. You're a corporation. Yeah. You're just a CEO of a corporation, and you know that your stock is low. The thing is My that my stock is low right. Yeah, the thing is that I've been working on, and you helped me with this, because one day I was talking to you, and I was bummed because there were some things I wasn't getting, and I was frustrated, and 
you said focus on the things you do have, not the things you don't have. And I've really trained my mind. Like, it's amazing that you can train your mind to focus on the positive. You can do it. It's just a, it's an exercise. I've been writing down. This is so fucking cheesy. People are gonna be like, what happened to you, Kate? But I've been writing down like 10 things every day that I'm thankful for. And sometimes when I'm sad, I'll start doing that and it'll really fix it because the fact is we are so fucking lucky. You're alive. You don't have cancer. You're not going to chemotherapy treatment. Look at what we're doing. You have five dollars in your pocket to go to Subway. I can afford I can afford and get a veggie and cheese sandwich. Yeah. You're breathing. I mean every morning I wake up when I was twenty one, I didn't have that perspective. Yeah. When I was twenty one, I'm broke. I'm a loser and I'm miserable. But it was all revolved revolved around money. Money was gonna make it so much better. By the time I got to forty, I was like, Jesus Christ, I'm fucking ecstatic. I'm at the comedy store every night. I may have eight dollars and twenty two cents in my That's checking it. account, but I'm ecstatic. There's a line in Narcos, Mexico. That Narcos, Mexico, it's about Kiki Camarena, and at the end, you know, if you haven't seen Narcos, Mexico, you're not gonna watch it. And I don't give a fuck if I spoil your thing. Well, Game of Thrones, I don't give a fuck. Go fuck your brother. <laughs> fuck you and Game of Joey, Thrones. Joey, calm down. So, the Game of Thrones spoiler. Don't, don't fuck no, you spit in your fucking mouth, Game of Thrones. Will you stop? Go, so, go back to Narcos. And, he, and there's a scene when he's interviewing, <laughs> when he thinks he looks out into the ocean and he remembers his interview with Kiki Camarena. And he lights a cigarette and he goes, I do these because. Now, here's Kiki Camarena sitting there with his eye out of his fucking head, with drill bits getting put through his leg. And this guy walks in and he takes the guys out and he's telling them why he's doing this. Yeah. He goes, tell them what you want and you go home. And the guy's telling them, I have kids, please send me home. And this guy just starts talking. Diego Luna, who's a phenomenal actor, and he goes, he goes, uh, he like, goes to light a cigarette and he goes, I, I use these because they reduce stress. And he goes, you know what's crazy? That when I was broke, I slept like a baby. And now that I have money, I can't sleep at night. That is that's my the head realest blew up. shit. My head blew up. That's so he real. Goes, when I was broke and I had nothing, I slept like a baby. It's so real. And now I sleep two, three hours a night. And you think about that sentence, and it's what I'm telling you people. We focus on the wrong things. So money many is times. nothing. And money is garbage. It's money nothing. will come and go. It's a worse addiction than cocaine. Once you take money out of the picture and you go, wow, I'm doing this because I love it. That's I it. genuinely love this. I could get up every morning and do this for free, whether it's taking it in the ass or fucking building <laughs> fireplaces or lighting Jews on fire. If this is what you like. That's, that's, and you do it for do free. <laughs> don't do this, but I'm just making a point here. I won't get a BMW, but I'll light them on this fire. This is what you do for a <laughs> I mean, I would never light a Jew on fire. <laughs> Not you. I wouldn't get a BMW. He might light me on fire. Well, no. he might. He probably has. No. Well, my point is that until you really fall in love with that thing. It's and, true. And look at the sky and go, I'm living in a hovel. That's it. I got rats. I'm sharing a sandwich with a rat. I've done that. But boy, literally, <laughs> do I love what I do. And all of a sudden, a month after that, God will unload a suitcase on you of dollar bills. It's true. And you think you're a fucking stripper. When you think you don't need it, when you it think shows up. You don't up. need it. If you it go to LAX, up. I know Jersey Mike's. Before you go to LAX, there's a Jersey Mike's on Century Boulevard. Okay. On the right hand side. Yeah. And there used to be a place that if you went there. By the hotel. By the hotel. You went in there, you said, I want to go to New York tonight. And they get you a flight for a hundred bucks. What? But they treat you like a Puerto Rican. They lose your luggage. They would fucking put Spirit you in the back Airlines. Of the it was Spirit Airlines. It was like somebody you bought tickets last minute. Huh? And I would take one of those. But how I would get back here would be by bus. Oh. So I would land in Newark. One of my friends would pick me up. I'd go to his house, take a shower, eat, and then we'd get weed, coke, I party, and then the next morning. He dropped me off at Port Authority in New York City. And from there, you could get all around the world on a fucking bus. It'd be fun if you did it with your friends. It would. And I would take a bus all the way to Buffalo. And then my friend from Miami, he was, the, this is how comedy works. I had a friend in Buffalo. No, I had a friend in Miami who well, his bro, his, him and his brother were waiters at the Improv. Yeah. His one, both good looking white dudes from New York. 
One sold coke heavy duty, and the other one just snorted coke heavy duty. I <laughs> and he ate Chinese food, so I hung out with the one that snorted coke heavy duty. But he dated a Puerto Rican girl, so I would I would start, or, or I would take a flight to Miami and work two weeks in Miami, and then from Miami I would take an Amtrak to Myrtle Beach. And How then, damn that's a long that's ride fucking, too. That was brutal. Yeah. And then from Myrtle Beach I would go to D.C. I would do Tyson's Corner, Virginia, Bethesda, Maryland, the DC Improv with John X was booking it on individual. Oh, would you take buses to all those places? Buses. This is all be by bus. But the train is so much nicer. Like, it's probably way more expensive. But the tra train. Train is expensive. It's almost as much as yeah, flying yeah. now. It's crazy. Amtrak, Amtrak is a rip off because I'll tell you why. Yeah, it's one sixty to get on it. That's yeah. for a chair. Really? Oh, you want a seatbelt? Oh, <laughs> that's eight dollars. Yeah. Oh, you want a blanket? That's another twelve. Oh, you don't want to sit next to a Chinese guy? That's no, another twelve dollars. I don't think that's an option, actually. I don't think <laughs> oh, you want to sit on a chair that reclines? That's another eighteen dollars. Oh, wait a second. The special tonight? Yeah. For dinner? Have you ever been on a on a train? No, because the one time I was going to do it, it was the same as flying. And I'm yeah. Like, Fuck so that. You, here's how the train works. You ready? Yeah. You get to the caboose where they give you food. It's salad, soup, two egg roll appetizer, uh, <laughs> a, a, a main dinner and dessert, and free wine and coffee. So they want 30 bucks for the whole thing. You go over there and you go, listen, what if I don't want the salad, the dessert, or whatever? Can I just get the fucking entree? No. You got to get the whole thing. Yeah. So it was just like a ripoff for me, so I never took the train again. I don't know what he's talking about. There's trains from Boston to New York. That are like those trains that are cool. Yeah, I've done that. Like, uh, like what, 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 what Matt Fultron did when I worked Providence. He took a train right from Penn Station. That's like the Long those Island trains. Railroad I'm not type. Don't listen to yeah. him. He don't know nothing about like, Amtrak. The, the Amtrak right? like, but that's no. the thing. is that, like Boston to New York is for buses, too. I did that 8,000 right. times. I can't imagine being going. Like, yeah. I even looked. Yeah. I even looked from L.A. to to Boston just once on Greyhound just to see and I think it's like two three days on Greyhound of, you looked it's like just to see what it was days. there's no express that's such a weird thing to look no like. no you know you have to there stop is, and like express there is an express Greyhound yeah. LA to Boston on a Greyhound there is an express. that's so crazy though four fucking days I'm just thinking like a fucking animal oh that sounds like you know who does that Eric Myers you know Eric Myers the little do you guys know him the comic yeah. he's from Florida kind of a scrawny dude super funny guys that's He's terrified to fly so bad. He's an addict, right? But he's sober. But if he flies, it's pushed him off the wagon before, so he's too scared. So he'll take a fucking bus from Florida to L.A. every time, back and forth. You have no idea. It's crazy. You have no idea what it's like to be on a bus. I've taken buses from Philly to New York. The longest, like that. Yeah, two, four no, hours, six yeah. hours. I remember one time I went to New York on a Sunday. And my week at Hyenas. Yeah. In Dallas, started on like a fucking Thursday, and I made plans with a friend of mine. We're gonna snort coke, we're gonna do all these fucking things, and I put away all this money. In Dallas? No, in New York. Oh, so in New when York. I got to New York, I realized I couldn't get a hold of him. He had been at a different coke party for the night before, <laughs> so here I am all day Sunday waiting for him. I checked into a hotel room. I, you know, I, I, I dropped like eighty dollars, and I'm like, fuck. You know, Eighty dollars. I don't know what it was, so but I, at that time this was like this is this is feature money, guys. Yeah, this yeah, is, yeah. No, I'm saying is, that's a good deal he, for a hotel. Not, the guy I was going to meet is not even alive anymore, and he died in '99. So this had to be '98. I was oh, making four hundred a week then, yeah. or something. And I had a week. I had I found a, a flight out of Kennedy to Dallas for like ninety bucks. No, Damn. like no, like one sixty or something. But it was a tremendous flight, so I was going to wait the three days. And I'm in the city. I went into the city. I bought some Coke. I had my luggage with me, like my comedy luggage. And what I did was when I landed in the Port Authority, you could put your shit in lockers. So I put my shit in a locker. Wow. I tried to get a hold of a friend of mine. I couldn't get a hold of him. So I did what I usually do. I took a train. I took the eight train uptown. I picked up two grams, two toots. I picked up a couple nickel bags, a couple packs of rolling papers. I picked up a few lighters. I w took an A train back to Times Square. I bought some CDs. And I said, you know what? I can either wait till Thursday, pay a bunch of money to stay in a hotel and blow all my money on coke take with the these bus. guys. Or I could take the Greyhound. It was the Express to Dallas. How? Not bad. I mean, you know what? Sometimes 
when I fly, you always, everyone always asks if I sleep. I never sleep because I love, I get more work done in a six hour flight on a plane where no one can bother me and it's completely quiet and dark than I ever do in like two days at my apartment. So if I was on a bus for three days, I'd probably write a whole script. Yeah, like, I would no, get that's so much do. shit done. That's why it's not that bad as a comedian. Yeah. When you travel, you're like, when do I need to be there? Thursday. Okay, I got two options. Yeah, I could fucking live there for two days, hand to mouth, and live in a budget, or just be on a bus for two days. Yeah, it kind of sucks, but it's just a day and a half. Really. Now they have Wi-Fi on those buses. Yeah, they too. have Wi-Fi. It's not that bad. They have buses that are pretty pent up. Like they have the Mexican bus, El Paso. That's a complete different bus. What's a Mexican bus? That's for Mexican people. It's run by Mexican mm -hmm. companies. Like an old school and they bus? they have music on. They have Telemundo. That sounds TVs. fun. Yeah. Pinatas and they shit. They have Telemundo. Somebody sells tamales on there. I like that. They have that. But they also have the Greyhound, you know? I, I Like I said, I just, I, I, had, I had a lot of long trips on Greyhounds. I had a couple of sexual... Uh, I cannot imagine Contact. meeting a guy on a bus, on a bus across country, a Greyhound, and hooking up before we got to the stop. Like, I can't even imagine that happening to me, but that would be my favorite story ever. I had, I had, I had a hookup on a plane one time, at night when I had a girlfriend. No way. I got on a plane, and I started making out with this girl on the plane. Next thing I'm fingering in the blankets. <laughs> How did that happen? I have no fucking idea. Were I was you... drunk and hammered from the night before, and so was she. And she was with her friends, and she switched seats to sit next to me. Like, I've met her at the airport. Oh, you met her before you got on the flight? Yeah, like, we met at the hotel, I could see at the that. hotel bar. I'm talking to her. I'm 21 at the time. That's I'm amazing. nuts. I met my ex-wife at an airport. No way. Yeah, I could meet women at an airport when I was young. I got to start, start looking because cuter the at the airport. Because the airports were parties. What See, 20 talking? years ago, flying was completely different than what it is today in America. 30 years ago. Yeah, there's no, like, 40-pound pit bull on your flight in the seat there, next There was to no you. animals. There was none of that shit. Uh, uh, security was very lax. I remember having Coke in a jacket one time. They told me to take my jacket off. And I remembered that I had the Coke in, like, the inside pocket. Like, it was like, a, yeah. like I had, like, a shirt and tie on. Yeah. And the guy was about to go in there, and something made him, like, stop. And he goes, all right, go through. And that was it. Why would he check but, your jacket? But planes were different back then. I feel like then. coins or keys. Or planes were different back then. Like a red eye in the 80s meant red eyes weren't for decent people. Shut up. No. Really? Red eyes were for degenerates. You didn't turn the lights off on a fucking flight in the 80s and 90s on a fucking red eye. I wish they still had flights. How great no. would it be if they had adult-only flights and that the, were like R-rated? And, and people knew whoever was drinking. Hey, whoa, 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 what's going on? Hey, you like the red title and buy him a beer. Next thing you know, I'm buying you a drink on the plane. No way. And next thing you know, the lady I'm sitting next to, she's a fucking boring fuck. So we're going to move up. <laughs> Listen, you might as well move over there because we're going to talk all night. And next thing you know, there'd be three rows. <laughs> nine, you know, there's not 18 people talking. And one guy would say, you got a bump? Yeah, let me do a Shut bump. Shut up. And bro, you have no fucking idea. No I remember way. one time being at an airport getting delayed in Denver. This is when the last flight to Aspen was 9 o'clock and getting delayed at, an airport, at Denver Stapleton Airport and then meeting a guy, and the guy's like, dog, I got power. And me and him, the bars would stay open until 2 or 3, and we're at this bar just bumping, and we kept chasing <laughs> bars. Where can we, what bar is open? You got to go to Terminal D's, got a bar. <laughs> Shut and up. And we had the Coke hidden. And the, that's the same night I had, like, 12 ounces of Coke. Because I was going to New York to pick up Coke, and I would bring it to Denver. Then sometimes the flight would get delayed, so I put it in one of those lockers. In the airport? In the airport that would have those lockers. So I put the Coke in there. I'd take a gram or two out so I could bump freely at the bar with, with somebody I'd meet. It's so different now. And then I would go back there. Oh, my God. You could never even find a locker. I remember my flight. One of the best flights I was ever on was the... Listen to me. Guys, listen to me. Lee... Lee is my friend. I love Lee. Lee gave me one of the best compliments he ever gave me. It's, it's, he didn't even know he gave me a backhanded compliment, but it meant the world to me. He said that all the people he did business with, the only one that worked out for him was a guy who went to prison and somebody who kidnapped somebody. That everybody else fell apart. Lee knows how, how strong of a mind I have. When I got on the plane, July 1st, 1985, 
When I got on that plane, I was headed to Colorado Springs, Colorado. Yeah. But because of a funny drunk black dude on the flight that we were drinking with, he talked me into going to Boulder. I went to Boulder. No My way. life is the way it is today because of a drunk I met on a plane that came from row 10 to row 20. Because in those days, you know what I do to you? Like I come back there and hit you and we talk for a little while. Yeah. In those days, you could stand in the aisles with a beer. Yeah. So I could talk to you. Like, what's up, chick? What's I happening? I missed that. That's what I want. What's going on with you and your world looking with your fine ass and shit? <laughs> Let me buy you a cocktail Is and that shit. how you talk? Oh, my God. In those days, I would meet people on planes. No way. So in those days, first class was upstairs. If you watch the movie Midnight Run, first class used to be upstairs. There was an airline that I went on one time that the fuck, there was a pig with an apple in its mouth. When you got on there, that's how strong. No first class way. used to be phenomenal. Perfumes, hand creams in first class, Shut up. in the bathrooms. Yeah, flying has changed dramatically. Wow. But what changed the most was the party aspect of the flight. You know how many fucking flights I got on where 12 people were doing blow and drinking? Shut up. And you're in the middle of the plane. People moving their hands and shit. <laughs> fucking people giving cocktail weight. What are those stewardesses? $20 yeah. bills. Like, keep bringing the fucking vodkas. Everybody was That's in a Well, my fucking craziness ends. International stuff. What do you mean you won't do it? Me, petrifies me to death. Why? You mean to, to perform? Just like this, everything. Or to get there specifically, Listen, like the travel. <laughs> I, tr I, test I tried Jamaica twice. Mm. And I tried... Puerto Rico, I could go there. But What's wrong with, with why, what happened in Jamaica? It just creeped me the fuck out. The <laughs> island creeped you everything, out? Everything, everything. <laughs> the food, the Were you island. there for vacation or for work? One time on vacation, one day to shoot a movie. The rest of the world fired. is in Jamaica, though. There's like other parts. Yeah, but I How know. How can Jamaica be bad? Isn't it like, it's like a home of reggae I the, music? I saw the chickens and, and shit. I'm picking Rasta, up the food. Rasta, The chicken tastes weird. <laughs> the food tasted weird. They have Jamaican jerk I chicken. Know, I know. They got me. I don't like none of that <laughs> shit. I've never heard that before. I went to Jamaica and it turned me to like all no. international travel. I You're like, I'm never going anywhere. So scared. <laughs> because of my felonies and everything, I'm so scared to go international. They lock me abroad and shit. So I just leave it alone. I'm pretty, like, I don't have a passport, but in many ways, I don't want one. <laughs> like, when they told me you couldn't have a passport, I'm like, fine, I ain't going to fucking do it. It's not like I'm going to Ireland. To what felonies? You still, if you have a felony on your record, is that there forever? Oh, it's like Did herpes. Unless uh, <laughs> I get rid of it. I don't know why I thought maybe like it goes away for good service, like, you know, after I've so got many two years. two felonies in Colorado and like, Two in Seattle. What are they? The the ones in Colorado are second degree burglary and accessory to a felony. The one in Seattle is like a, a something to domestic violence, which I didn't smack no no woman. I and believe that. When you let's say you and Lee live together. Okay. So and I was your a ex great boyfriend, dream, obviously. And I, I was your you, ex boyfriend. Man. Yeah. And I saw you out in a bar and we got into a fight, it'd be domestic violence. If, That's why wait, I if would, I'm out with Lee and, oh, and I run into you at a, at bar, a bar and we get in a fight? I think if he lives with you. Oh, because you're my ex boyfriend Yeah, that's what happened. Oh. So, oh, no, no, it was a horror show, but still that domestic violence oh, thing bug, bugged me out for a long time. And then there was like a simple assault charge at a bar. I got busted at uh, the Comedy Underground in Seattle. Like if you walk into the comedy, if you call Ron Reed at the Comedy Underground and I'm coming through, can I do a guest set? you got a guest set. Ron's, Ron's yeah. a, a manager, yeah. a comics comic type deal. Lee, you're looking backwards. Oh, I'm going through changes <laughs> right now. This is changes. I'm really? enjoying hearing all the felonies. This, this is, is fascinating deep to, to me. Yeah. What's, what's this up? This is deep. To Wait, the Italy? second yes, one. The second one. You said you were. Uh, uh, you were. What is it called when you help someone else with a their accessory to? Yeah, a you were an accessory. What were you an accessory to? What was kidnapping. The, what? Kidnapping. How are you an accessory to kidnapping? Because this is all the same uh, crime. The, the whole kidnapping thing with Ken Vela. I, my attorney plea bargained down the second degree burglary, an accessory to a felony. <laughs> it's now all the, one crime. Now, the accessory to <laughs> okay. a felony. I is think you're the one of the first people to find this out on mushrooms. Listen to me. The accessory to a felony is very interesting <laughs> because that's what fucked. That's how he fucked them. Because the court, everybody said, accessory to what felony? <laughs> the second degree burglary or the kidnapping and he would say the second degree burglary and it's non-violent 
because his job was to get it non It's a long fucking Wait, story. Wait, so were you convicted, though? Oh, yeah. I got locked up and everything. Oh, but he had a great case, is he what did you're a great, he, he did, did a great, great job. job. I was looking at kidnapping one confusing. and two. I'm looking at <laughs> I'm looking at kidnapping one and two. If I take it to trial and I lose, it's 48 years Holy times two. shit. I never see daylight. The first offer was 12 or 14. Wow. Then they went to nine for kidnapping. And I was like, nine for kidnapping means I do nine Are you years. terrified? I would be not terrified that's because my I thought worst I thought at that time I was Mine gonna too. split. Yeah. Oh. Like I thought at that time I'd split or do something as it got closer. I was out on bail, oh so my I, God. at least if you got out on bail, you could fucking think and negotiate. How in the world would you split? You're just gonna like hike into Mexico? I didn't know what I was gonna do. <laughs> I had a friend Holy that shit. had a I had a friend that had a Hertz dealership in Honduras, and there's no extradition treaties with Honduras. This is. I had friends that were just trying to help me out. Oh, my God. But the more I thought about it, I'm like, you have to run with this the rest of your life. You know, you one day you come, come back. back to the States, yeah. you have a wife, a kid, a family, you get into a car accident, they take you to the hospital, you're wanted for fucking 2,000 years. Yeah, you can that never come back. That goes your whole life. So forget yeah. about that shit. But then this attorney just worked miracles, and I toughed it out, and I said, you know what? I did it. I always knew I was going to go do time. I knew, I knew, I knew it was in my cards. I knew I was going to get it. I might as well do this and get it over. And that was it. Wow. What was it like? I'm so, I don't know why, I'm fascinated by like what really goes on in prison. Because you see movie and, you know, movies and TV, but I don't, that's probably not real. Like, what is it really? On the outside, nothing. On the outside, nothing. I I, I knew I was going to get in this. All I could wish for was every day that I, you know, there was crazy people in there. Even when I got to the camp. There were people in there that had been there for murder, man. You know, they, they still have those tendencies, and now there's a thin line for what respect is in the outside and what respect is inside with people. Yeah. There's a weird uh, thing in your mind. You know, there's a lot. So I just kept to myself. You know, I had a friend that had gotten into trouble, and I took him out to lunch a bunch of times, and he hooked me up. He called the prison and talked to the one guard. He goes, this is my buddy. He was well... He was rich, this guy. Mm. His name was Ed Kabash. He was a bad motherfucker. He was a, a geek that became a, a drug millionaire. He started hanging out with this chick who knew about drugs, and he, he made money, and then wow. he crashed two cars in one week. He had a liquor store, a Luxury. computer store. Oh, yeah, he had two chicks. He was wow. fun. They were driving Porsches. I mean, this guy was banging. Now, that sounds nice. But when he got locked up, he paid a lot of money to get taken care of. He paid mm. a lot wow. of money. Wow! So you can really pay of. people. He paid a lot on of money. To How get interesting! Taken care Did of. you pay money to get taken care a of? A little bit. Really? Like a couple people, just like when I got in, they told me what to do, and I thought I took care of. You them seem the like a guy that would very quickly move up, though, and be running your own little ring. No, I didn't. Oh. <laughs> I tried to keep because you don't want to step on nobody's toes. Right. When I got to my final destination, yeah, I was having a great fucking time. Really? Yeah. You were yeah. having fun? Yeah. You're the, fr- you're the oh, first yeah. person I've ever heard say they were having fun in jail. I mean, you can look at it two <laughs> fucking ways. You can look at it from two fucking ways. I had no, re- you know, I was working in a kitchen. I had access to food. Yep, yep. Which meant people wanted to talk to me because I had access to food. Oh, they yeah, wanted, of course. They wanted cheese to make nachos. They wanted this. Oh. They like skim right. milk. You know what I'm saying? Are you winking at me on purpose or are you hot? No, I'm just, okay. I'm just <laughs> like going like, you know. I'm like, like, oh, this coat? It's all this food coat. So you get something? favors. Yeah. You follow me? Got it. Me? Okay. You yes. get favors. Yeah. With, you know, like yeah. the guys that work in the garbage crew. Yeah. Listen, my girlfriend's going to drop off a pair of panties on the exit over there. <laughs> That's the kind they, of favors? Yeah, like Oh, crazy I think they're like shit. cigarettes. No, no, like maybe... Uh, <laughs> Listen, you like to do coke? How about I give you an eight ball? Okay. Got go it. To, Got go it. to this spot. There's a bag. There's going to be coke in there. Put it down And dirty bowl. panties. They, yeah. don't, they don't search you, you know, on the way back or something. Okay. Just think, once you have those type of jobs, people. Yeah. So, like, I had friends that would come to me and go, my wife brought me to Molly's, bro. Can you put them in the freezer for me? I'll give you two right off the top. Bam. Oh, Shit nice. Shit like that. I had access to a freezer. The hookup. I had access to a, a property. Uh, 60 yards from the main facility so the guys that were selling steroids and shit would say to me you have a stash over there we'll pay you some money you know we we got some heroin so I would put it somewhere where I couldn't get in trouble for it what I would put it somewhere where it's not in my car but I'm watching it but not really 
So if there was crates outside and the garbage man had to pick them up, I would stash the heroin under a crate or something so nobody got in trouble. Oh, my God. It could always be the garbage man. There's always That's a... so risky, though. There's always a doubt. You were involved in dangerous activity. You could have been taken out. No, I wasn't. On the inside. Shanked. No, I wasn't. Shanked. No, I wasn't. I was fine. It wasn't like that at all. They were like low-level dudes, but... But heroin still, is a high-level drug. It was, there was a guy that was a biker that I became friends with. But I still think about him. He's a solid fucking white dude. <laughs> solid white dude. Just still, a fucking I still banger. Think, I, would think about, I still think about him late at night. And uh, he <laughs> used to get meth every Monday from his girlfriend. His girlfriend would come in and swap spit with him with a condom and fill it up with fucking meth, it, like two eight balls and like a little condom. Every Monday? It every oh. Monday. Oh, wow. And he would put it over here in his mouth and walk in. With, he oh, wouldn't no. even swallow oh, and shit. Oh, wow. They would search him and fucking Dangerous. he'd come in and he'd call me over to his room and we'd do a little line of meth. And then we'd go play basketball in the gym and I thought I was fucking Julius serving. My heart was going <laughs> to blow up. There oh, was my a lot, God. You know, I still think of those guys. Torrey Piles, the black dude that was a high-level crip. He had seven fucking girlfriends, and each of them had a different fucking Porsche, Mercedes. It was amazing how on much On the money. outside. On the outside. Seven girlfriends. But how long was he Three in Three kids. He was in there for 12 or 13 years. He was... What? But he got Paying out. Paying for seven girls? He, he got... Oh, this motherfucker <laughs> was making cash in there. That's crazy. This is when the Crips were what going you, from California to Colorado and distributing cocaine. What do you need seven girlfriends for in jail, though? Because he was big dick pimping. Do That's they the have conjugal it. visits at this jail? Yeah. They, oh. You said it's very mental, whatever. At the age, in 1994, I, I got mad at the world. I got divorced, and some people took her side, some people took my side. You know, shit was going on. I was broke. I was frustrated as a comic. You get frustrated as a comic. Sure. And the frustration is you want it so fucking bad. You don't understand how bad I want this. So you figure out how you're going to get this, and you know it's a plan. But I remember thinking to myself this. You know, I tell Lee I love him. I tell Kate I love her. When I talk to Joe at the end, we say we love you, the yeah. kids I grew up with. I don't give a fuck what you people say. You know, in the sense of your family. I, I have a tight-knit group of people. You have to mentally be strong and say to yourself, you know what, if this person loved me, he wouldn't act this way or she wouldn't act true. this way. True, that's true. I'm getting rid of them. You're right. I'm getting rid of them. You're because right. Because this is so stressful that you can't, the, the worst part of this, this and anything that has your mind involved on a daily is when you get caught up in somebody else's life. That's it. Well, not okay? just, yeah. You know what? Now I'm living with Kate and Kate is depressed. Uh, the, the sitcom got fucking, and now <laughs> my sitcom is rocking right. and rolling. My sitcom is yeah. rocking and rolling yeah. on ABC. Yeah. And yours just got canceled. So now, now you're Now I'm depressed and then you're yeah. killing it and, and then, then there's this yes. weird elephant in the room. Yes. Yeah, totally. I see that. And, yeah, and, and this is why I tell people, that, you know what, man? If something in your, you have to eliminate problems. You're on right. Your own and pick. You have to pick. What is that expression? You have to pick. Pick your battles. Pick your battles. You really do. You can't worry. You're That's right. why when I hear people talking about politics or the Jets <laughs> or whatever, I look at that car that's got three dents in it. I go, why are you worried about the Jets or Trump yeah. or Hillary or fucking Pence or any of this shit? Worry about you got your problems shit. right in yes, front of true. you. true. Nothing really started to work for me in my life till, especially with comedy. You know what I used to do every afternoon? I used to fucking get up, smoke dope, write a little bit, go get Chinese, go see if I got check in the mail over on Gardner, and then from there I'd hook up with a bunch of comics and we talk right, about our sure. futures, and I realized the guys I was hooking up with had no had future. Had no future. What was I doing four hours in the afternoon, hanging mm. out with these guys, getting depressed, and I eliminated them from my life, and next thing you know, we're here. You know, I heard the best quote somebody said to me one time. They said, if someone cuts into your self-esteem, cut them out of your life. Like, if anything about them is making you feel shitty, cut them out, and it's it's true. I'm pretty good about it for the most part, but occasionally I fall into one. Well, and it's not that. It's just there's people who come into your life and they consume energy to That's maintain it. their friendship. That's it. And one day you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sitting over here worried about this person. 
And I got two shows that are sold out. Exactly. Why the fuck am I... Uh, yeah, you're right. There's just so many aspects of the mind. You know, it's like, it's like when people first come out here. You ever see a movie star blow up right in front of your eyes? Yes. Tiffany Haddish. Well, no, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm talking about, like, I saw that fucking dude. The dude that did, uh, that they, they used to be Ahmed Ahmed's roommates. Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn. Oh, Vince, yeah. Okay. I saw Vince Vaughn blow up. Yeah. I saw Vince Vaughn blow up so hard that he got oversaturated. Yeah. And they blew him up even so hard that for a while he was just doing bomb movies. Yeah. And that happens because it's the it's the law of diminishing returns. Results, returns. returns. You know. Yeah. You cannot take on eighteen. You and I both know. That's true. You That's and I true. both know. If you came to me right now and said, Joey, you're on a TV show, you're gonna do stand up and I'm gonna maintain the podcast, I'd sit down honestly can't. and go, Okay. So true. Lee, the podcast is on Sunday nights every Sunday because can't do it during the week. That's Not a it. TV show. There's no way I could fit it in during the that week. That just happened to me. There's You're right. no You're way right. I'm going to work all day and come home, wash my pussy, and come in here and talk to some fucking guest. <laughs> and then be prepared and for be tomorrow. Prepared. That's so it. So Sundays, I'm doing that. Then I look at my comedy schedule and I go, you know what? I don't want to do this, but I have to do this. This gets scrapped. This gets scrapped. This, you this have is a to connecting choose. flight. This You're gets right. scrapped. This gets scrapped. This gets scrapped. Put Friday and Saturday rooms instead. There the whole time, so yeah, I could stay home till Thursday. Yeah, yeah. you don't want to spread yourself too thin. It's so easy. I've to do. seen twenty thousand comics over the last twenty years run, start running with the ball, and next thing you know, that same ball kills them. You know what I think it is because I think it's when you're starting out, you want to say yes to everything because you, you just you want do. anything. You you're you're like, do. I want exposure. I'll do your podcast. No, and your no, thing no. But and I'm and talking you're... about when you first start out, you say yes to anything. And then yeah. like all the, every year there's a Shabbat festival. Yeah. The thing about Shabbat. Yeah. Right? Every set, September, the Shabbat uh, telethon. And they do it in Beverly Hills. And I'll never forget one day I'm in acting class, and as I'm walking out, the acting teacher comes up to me and goes, Come here for a second. <clears throat> some guys called here looking for you. And I go, Really? And I read it, and it's some kids. I call them up, and they have like an Israeli accent. And they're like, <laughs> oh, what, what is doing this? videos for Shabbat and we saw you and we want to use you it does not pay but you know all this shit it's going to be seen by 3,100 million Jews he goes everybody's <laughs> going to be there Spielberg the whole thing we cannot pay you I go let's fucking do it they fucking called me on Labor Day me and my wife had plans like we had just started this day. year? no oh back this, then this is, has to be because we were talking about the other day Shabbat Telethon came on hilarious I go remember that she goes please I'll never forget that we had just started we had been dating like maybe two years I was always on the road I'm finally home one weekend and this Labor Day we get invited to a party and something we have like a dinner like we used to our big th thing in those days was sizzler <laughs> We used to, like, if we That's went, still my big thing. If we went to Sizzler <laughs> in those days, that was to celebrate like movie roles. We go to Sizzler. Amazing. Like if I got a TV show, you went to Emmy. When I got the Chaz Palm and Terry <laughs> movie, and we went to Sizzler, we spent thirty five dollars. We're like, oh shit! You're like steak Look night. At us. Oh my god, it's cold. <laughs> I had just come from Sarasota, Florida. I've been hiding from the cops, and I'm in this car, and I got a job at a factory, painting shells and putting boxes together. Because Entenmann's, when you go into a supermarket, yeah. Entenmann's has a shelf. Those Entenmann shelves, yeah. I would spray paint them with, no a, with a gun, and then we'd put them in shelves, and you'd have to build them at the store. So I got a job. If I stayed there for 30 days, I'd become a union. It was my first shot of being a human being again. How old were you? I was 19. Oh, wow. And Fernie, my buddy, had a, his father had the H&B diner around the corner it was right in Edgewater, right downtown Edgewater, where they shot uh, Copland. And H and B Diner was the heart of the city. Like people were, it was packed every day. I don't think I knew you lived in Florida. No, this ain't fucking Florida. This oh, is New I thought Jersey. you said Sarasota. I was in Sarasota hiding out from the cops. Oh. I come back when, the, when I found out the cops weren't looking for me no more, 
and I moved in with my buddy Fernie. I love that you hid in Sarasota, by the way. I, that's the only. I had a friend that was in Sarasota. Yeah, his name was G Hartman. Not like Alaska or Mexico, just Florida. Well, at that time, everybody from Jersey only goes to Florida. Right. If you know anything about Jersey, they go to Atlantic City. It's the big time of the year when they break up the white shoes. <laughs> And then the other <laughs> side, they go to fucking Florida. That's Everybody it. from Jersey goes to Florida. That's it. That's it. Nothing west of the Mississippi. So I had a friend <laughs> that his father worked for NASA, and they lived in Florida. They moved to Florida when he was a sophomore, and he came back my senior year all fucking jumped up like fucking Tan, young. yeah. Tan, and he's like, if you ever want to come down, I'm down there dying in loneliness, man. He would have taken anybody. Really? And I remember going... I, the cops were looking for me on a Sunday night, and I remember going, fuck. I called him up. I had his number. And I go, Gary, I'm coming down tomorrow. I didn't tell him the cops were looking for me or anything. No, you don't I usually like, leave with that. coming in? I'll pick you up. He was so fucking excited just to have somebody. He was so lonely just to have somebody that knew what he was about yeah. and you know, how crazy he was and shit. How much time of your life would you say you spent hiding from the law? Hiding from the law and from people altogether, maybe three years, wow. like if you combine everything. That's amazing. So those are those first two months. But I always had something bad going on, Kate. Like there was always something in the pipe. Like you, criminal or just personal? <clears throat> personal. I, I always had something in the pipe I was working on. Mm. Kate came over here with a bag of coke and... She made me drop her off in front of the dealer's house. So now I knew that there was a dealer in that house. Right. So I would walk over there one night, and then I'd find out what his name was. So I always had something working. I always had somebody looking for me. Yeah, you always had a plan. You know, if, if, I, if I got to the point in my life that if I wasn't in trouble, I wasn't happy. Huh. Like, I lived in a place if, that if I wasn't in trouble, I wasn't happy. I had to go to sleep every night scared for me to go to sleep. From the pain I was going through with my mother and having no family, I got to a point that I didn't care about life, and I would just beat people. I've been there. I've like, been yeah, there. Like, like just, where you, just you give up. You don't, Or you just almost like when you're in pain, you want to do reckless shit reckless because shit, somehow yeah. like the more reckless you well, are. the world was mean to you, so now you're going to be mean back to the world. Yeah. The world was a scumbag to you, and this is the first time you've that the world has been a scumbag to you. So your immediate reaction, or my reaction as a young man, was to lash out against the world, Me too. regardless of who I hurt. And I kept yeah. a circle of people that I didn't try to involve them, but they would always get involved because they would always hear about it. So if everybody knew Kate was my goomba, every time I did something, Kate would have to hear about it. Yeah, of course. Your fucking buddy is up to it again. Yeah. And you're like, listen, his mother died, you know, give him a breather. Fuck that. He robbed my friend's house, and now he's out there doing coke, and he told him to go fuck himself. And, you know, so my friends are always getting the blunt of that. And that's why today I'm really good to those people. Oh, because yeah. all those times I would disappear, they'd be in the bar, and they'd take the blunt of it. Damn. Somebody would come and go, where's Coco? What, what are you talking about? Yeah, he robbed my house last night. And we know it's him, and fucking, we're gonna fuck him up. And my friends would giggle. What would your? They would. They would. They, they would like, love it. They would love it. That's insane. I'd be scared. They what? would love it. From Tenth Planet Kush. It drains the lactic motherfucking acid. People won't cop to it. The health specialists say, no, that doesn't happen, Joey. Yes, it fucking does. I got friends in Harvard, bitch. I'm like God Brooks. I got friends in high places, motherfuckers.